Play clock at five. Pass is in. I'm living in that 21st century, doing something mean to it. Do it better than anybody you ever seen. Do it. Screams from the haters. Got a nice ring to it. I guess every superhero need his theme music. No one man should have all that power. The clock's ticking. I just count the hours. Stop tripping. I'm tripping all the time. That might send the Yankees to the World Series. Welcome back to Ravelry Sports. Today we'll be talking about the Knicks and Celtics respective playoff series. So in the Celtics Heat series, the Celtics won game three, 104 to 84. Uh, it was a complete effort all around by everybody who played. The defense was much improved from game two and just a gritty win all around. Um, I think it was really a great game from Porzingis. Obviously, we both called him out after game two and he responded very well. Um, and then in game four, it was kind of just more of the same. We won it 102 to 88. Um, one concern that we have is Chris Stapps Porzingis. Um, he got injured. Shocker. Um, but he usually it, does. Yeah, he usually Not does. <laughs> but he should be out till at least the end of the next series if we advance, hopefully. But in this game, game four, Derek White had the best game of his career. He had 38 points and three blocks. As a Derek White super fan, I mean, there's nothing more I could have asked from him. It was just absolutely incredible. Uh, probably my favorite role player of all time. Yeah, game three, you guys came out and just showed that you were the better team. I mean, you lost game two, gave Miami some hope, and then game three, you just came out and took it right back. Went, won by like 20, and it was, yeah, all from there. It was over. Derek White, great game four. And again, you guys destroyed them. Now you're going into game five with momentum, and you should easily win that one because you're just the better team. Uh, poor thing is, I mean, he's always hurt. It won't affect you in this Miami series. It might after that. I mean, especially if to play uh, Cleveland, who plays those big guys. It could be tough without him. But right now against Miami, I mean, how, you play with half your team and you could beat them. They're down Butler. They weren't that good to begin with. You really don't need Porzingis right now. Yeah, that's the one thing. If we play Cleveland next series, Mobley and Allen, I mean, nothing against Al Horford, but he's like 60 at this point. He should not be playing playoff minutes. He's not going to play over 35 minutes. I think we'll see a lot of Xavier Tillman in next series. We traded for him at the deadline, one of the more low-key acquisitions. But I think he's a really nice five that we can run. He spaces the floor decently well. He's good cutter, good rebounder. And I think we would need that next series against Cleveland. Yeah. Um, moving on to the next series. Uh, they went up 2-0, won the first two games. And game three was in uh, Philly, and they lost. Uh, and beat at 50, took over the game. I mean, he said after game two they were going to win the series. And game three, he showed that he was going to fight and try to make them. And played a great game overall. I mean, there's not much you can do. And another guy scores 50. Like, yeah, he's just so good. It's not like you could just guard him better. Yeah, I mean, I know we all say, you know, Embiid's a dirty player, Embiid's a foul baiter, but you got to respect it. He's on one eye and he's on one leg, and he's still coming out and putting up 50. I don't think it gets any better than that in playoff, ser in playoff basketball. I think this is the best first-round series by far. But the one thing that really holds the Sixers back is – we all know how the game's going to go. And Bede plays a great first quarter. They're up by about 10. Then he goes to sit. Then Paul Reed comes in. And then the Knicks go on a run. They're up by four. And then they just go back and forth. And that's really how the series has gone. Yeah. And then, I mean, that's how it went in game four. So in Philly again, the Knicks won 97 92. Uh, and Bede was solid, especially in the first half. He was good. But then you get to the second half. You can see he's on one leg, hasn't been running at all. He's tired. He only had 27. Tobias Harris has been terrible all series. Um, and it's just, especially at the end of game four, uh, OJ and OB played great defense on Embiid. Completely took him out of the game. They were playing without Robinson. Hartenstein had 5,000. He was on the bench. And they had Precious Achua and OJ and OB just completely took Embiid out of the game. It was amazing. Brunson had a great game, leading the Knicks to win. And after the game was even better, and Embiid was complaining about how bad the Philly fans were, and how the Knicks fans took over Wells Fargo. Yeah, I was going to say, 
big, you know, great job by OG and Anobi. Locking down Embiid in the fourth quarter was not something that I was expecting coming into this series, but yet it happened, and he looked very good. I mean, he had a block last night in Game 5, which we'll get to, but he's just a very complete defender. I think you could make the case he's one of the more versatile defenders in the entire league. Uh, Jonathan Isaac is the one guy that comes to mind that could be more versatile than him, but... As you said, again, Tobias Harris, he's got to pick it up if they want to have any shot of winning this series. Yeah, I mean, Anobi, as you were saying, he's 6'7". He's been guarding, like, the one through five, really. But we haven't seen him guard a guy like Embiid, who's seven foot, probably has, like, 50 pounds on him. And Embiid, uh, you feel like, would just go through him, but it didn't happen. Anobi completely shut him down. Yeah, so heading into game five... Philly took this game 112 to 106 and it was really just an incredible finish. It was like game 2, but it actually worked out for Philly. Tyrese Maxey dropped like 40 something. Absolutely incredible game by him. Joel Embiid for some reason did not want to shoot in the fourth quarter, whether that was the Knicks big men or he just got fatigued from playing with one eye and one leg, but Luke as a Knicks fan, ha- ha- what is your reaction? from game five just disappointing at the game one you were up six with 30 seconds left and they managed to lose i mean they and maxi got that four point play to make put it at two which still there's like 25 seconds left should be able to win the game they get it in josh hart gets fouled misses one of two philly comes back on the next possession Knicks do decide to not foul on the floor for some reason which I don't understand it, ever not fouling on the floor when you're up three. And Maxi hits one from, like, the logo. Now, there's still eight seconds left, so the Knicks could call a timeout instead of a play. But they don't do that either, and they just give it to Brunson, let him run down the court, just head down and miss a lay- Well, not even miss, just like, get blocked on a layup going to three guys because they know he's the Knicks' only offense. So now the game is tied and going into overtime with Philly having full momentum. And it was back and forth in overtime, but eventually Philly ended up winning. Yeah, that was... A fantastic game from a basketball fan perspective. But going into game six, obviously going to be a real chippy game. Uh, again, as you said, in Wells Fargo, probably be half Knicks, half Sixers fans at the at the Wells Fargo Center. But um, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for watching this week on Rivalry Sports.